Hi, I'm Sarah Hobson. I'm the CEO and founder of Hobson & Hobson PC, and today I am pleased to have Samantha Duto with me. And thank you so much for coming on here. She's going to be sharing some information about her experience as a financial advisor with you today. So briefly, my name is Samantha Dutto. Uh, you can tell by the last name, um, I'm Italian, partly Italian. My mom is originally from the States. Uh, my dad is, you know, pure Italian, and I was born and raised there uh, for 19 years of my life. Oh, wow. Um, so I've been here in the States uh, almost 30 years. So I'm super excited to be here. I mean, obviously, I uh, grew up bilingual in the process, learned two more languages, so I speak oh, four wow. languages. Really? So, what yeah. are the other two? Uh, French and Spanish. Oh, wow. So, and I, um, I, like, I like to sp talk about that because it helps me with, you know, being able to understand other cultures, and especially here in Atlanta, we have such a, you know, huge Hispanic population uh, that I can help with, but also French and Italian, believe it or not. Um, there's a big Haitian population, so that mm -hmm. my French helps with that too. So, um, so the beauty of, you know, being from, you know, European country where we, we learn different languages, I, I can, you know, definitely bring that to, to my, my world of knowledge. So Samantha, tell me, what made you get into the financial field? Um, first of all, um, you know, speaking about my Italian heritage, I always say, you know, some of us are um, programmed, um, you know, our DNAs are, you know, go back generations and mm -hmm. generations. So we all have our, our habits that we picked up from our families and some of it were programmed. So coming from, you know, having that Italian background, my grandparents being through the First World War, the Second World War, I know I was programmed to be a saver. Right, so um, I've always been a great, great saver, but as I was growing up, I realized quickly how, you know, saving is absolutely step one, but you gotta do something with that money because you're, you're losing value. Mm -hmm. so, um, so in a way, money always intrigued me. My dad was in, in the banking field, so I remember growing up just talking about the financial industry. So when I, you know, when it was time to go to college, I thought, you know what, I like banking, I like economics, so I went into the economics uh, field, banking and then statistics. And when I finished, and the reason I came to the States was actually going to Georgia Tech, so I came here because of, of college. Um, I, I, I started working for a company that studied human behavior and how it affects their repayment patterns. Hmm. And I absolutely loved it, right? Hence came credit scores, because that's what credit scores are. So I worked, um, and developing the credit score so that I was looking at what was making people pay their debts and what wasn't. Oh, wow. Uh, so I, that just, I just loved it. But what I learned, so banks and financial institutions were my clients. But what, so what I learned in the process is that, um, you know, the system was in a way not set up to help the consumer, but was to help the banks. Mm -hmm. So, and that always kind of, you know, it's like, it, that was a part that rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. Um, so I just got, you know, I just started learning about how the banks worked, how investing worked, how, you know, how to get out of debt, just as a personal, it just interested me. And um, fast forward, you know, 10 years later, had children, and because of all the things that I had done, you know, I'd set myself up for, I decided to stay at home, raise my kids. And uh, during that time, I realized, and now I have two children, um, my son just graduated high school, my daughter is a, a junior, I realized that even with them going through all the, you know, some of the best schools in the state, they weren't taught anything mm -hmm. about financial literacy, education, budgeting, any life skills that revolve around finances. So, you know, about five, six years ago, I realized, you know what, the, the world needs me. We are, you know, in a debt crisis in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in a lack of education as far as financial uh, concepts. And I just thought, you know what, this is what I really wanted to do. And that what I had learned about the financial institutions before, I was like, I want to use that to help people. So I decided to, to get licensed and, um, and you know, bring my, my passion for the financial world and, you know, help people teach them, you know, how to become financially independent. That is so. really neat. So going back to what you learned about the behaviors, what are, what are maybe like three interest, two or three interesting ones about the repayment for credit scores? Okay, well, number one for sure, uh, owning a home is a huge, huge uh, determining factor if you're gonna repay your debts. And that's all debts, credit cards, car loan, I mean credit cards, 
that um, car loans, your mortgage, obviously, um, and then looking at your payment history. Okay, so the way the, the 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 bureaus hold your data, they look at how many times have you paid on time, how many times have you been 30 days late, 60 days late, 90 days late, charged off, and so forth. Okay, so that history is a strong predictor of your future behavior. So if you've had maybe one time 30 days past due, you're okay. Once you start hitting 60 days, 90 days, it, it's just it's a avalanche effect so in the future you're more likely to not not pay off uh, and the length of history you know so um, how long have you had a history so if you if you're fairly new um, there's not enough data to say so you're a little riskier if you've had you know a credit card for 20 30 years you, you chances are at by this point you've learned to manage your credit credit and these are some factors that are definitely going to affect people who are going through a divorce because mm -hmm. when you do get separated and, and, and then, you know, the divorce is finalized, you're having to go and, and get things on your own, you know, home on your own. Um, you might have to get a vehicle, you know, using your own credit, not joint mm -hmm. credit anymore. Right. So these behaviors are really important to pay attention to and, and make sure that you're keeping up with it and your spouse is keeping up with it during um, the divorce. Yeah. And actually, one more thing, too, is it and it's, it's measured in your credit, not as much, but one of the things that any institution, when you're applying for a credit card, a mortgage, you know, uh, any kind of loan, they're always going to look at your debt to income. So that is how much do you hold in debt and how much income do you make, right? So the higher that, it, that percentage is, the riskier you are. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's super important to minimize your debt. Now, there's some debt that, you know, is considered good debt, you know, like a mortgage, car loan, a credit card debt, obviously, not good debt, plus it's a highest, higher interest rate. So definitely the type of debt you have uh, is critical, but, you know, I'm a big proponent of no debt, right? So even the system that I teach my clients, which is, you know, the three steps to financial success, takes, you know, a piece of it has to do with the debt portion. So what about student loans? I've heard that that is sometimes considered good debt. Yeah. Um, so any debt, you know, depending on who you ask, any debt is bad because what, you know, what, what does that mean? That means you owe somebody, uh, you know, a certain amount of money, right? So you're always going to have to pay them first in essence. So you're putting, um, you know, your future self uh, on hold while you repay everybody else. Now, um, when I look at debt, uh, you know, there's a debt where you're, you're, you're Say you're you know, student loan or mortgage. They're kind of, to me, they're similar in the sense that you're investing in an asset, right? Something that it's going to possibly bring back value to you, right? So we know homes appreciate over time. You go into college and, you know, getting an education should give you, you know, a, a higher paying job in the future. So they're, they're a little bit better. Is it good? You know, it would be better, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you wish you could go in with, you know, having, you know, college planning done, uh, scholarships, grants, there's so many options out there. So, but a little bit of college debt, you know, especially if you're going to make more money, absolutely worth it. When, you know, the one that you really want to be, stay away from is where you're putting money into liabilities, a car and a mm -hmm. credit card. I mean, those are probably, you know, the ones that you absolutely want to stay away from. And if you're in it, then find a way, um, you know, assistance that we'll talk about on how to get out of it as quickly as possible. So for those of you who are watching who are facing a divorce, um, you know, a key point here is that when you're talking about uh, division of debt throughout your, you know, you're talking about division of marital assets, so there's also marital debt, um, there may be certain debt that it would be more strategic to work out getting paid, paid off or paid down throughout through the divorce as opposed to others. So, you know, it may be something to think about, well, maybe you should be having um, the car payment paid down or the credit card payment paid down as opposed to, um, you know, making a lump sum payment to the mortgage or student loan. This is something that you would need to talk to um, a financial advisor like mm -hmm. Samantha about to see in your instance what is, what's in your best interest. But it does right. matter, you know, where that money is going to go to when you're, when you're trying to get back on your own two feet um, after a divorce and have a good credit so that you can move on to, you know, a better life. Right. And, and critical in that is... Um, is, is looking, there's several factors to look into. One is how much money is owed. 
the type of debt, again, is it building assets, is it a liability, and what's the interest rate? Because mm -hmm. one of the big problems with credit cards, besides it's financing a lifestyle that you can't afford, you know, the average interest rate in the United States on a credit card is 24%. Mm -hmm. And if you think of the compounding effect at 24%, I mean, if we all went into the market and thought, oh, I'm going to make 24%, oh, yeah. we'd all jump on it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh, 24% is, is a great return on an investment. But imagine that 24% working against you, because that's what it's doing. It's working the same exact way as an investment, just against you. So you're financing somebody else's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. at, at the expense of yours. And 24% is so extreme. That's something that would trigger an investigation in, yeah. in um, investments, like in stock investments. That's a very right. high right. return. <laughs> Even like, you know, I, you know it's, I remember, you know, when, when I went to college, and this is, you know, 30 years ago when I started, you looked at student loans then. You know, most of them were about 2 to 5%. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at my clients today, and I'm sure you're seeing it too, is on average student loans interest rates are eight, nine. I've had clients with 13 to 14 mm percent. -hmm. On a student loan, something, you know, and student loans can be substantial, you know, $100,000, $150,000 at 10, 12 percent. You know, it's it's a hard oh, yeah. hole to get out of. So it's it's critical to be able to, you know, prevent that as much as you can, but also, you know, use the tools um, that you know that financial advisors like myself have to help you get out of it because it is possible. I mean, it's you know I've helped um, you know I have a three-step approach that I that I that I talk with my clients whether they're going through you know whether they're single whether they're married it works you know it works in all aspects of life because it takes the three main components and applies them to wherever you are in your life and one of them is the debt piece of it. Okay. So what do you see as the most pressing issue that's facing, you know, regard, let me do that again. So what is the most pressing financial problem that you see today and how do we solve it? Okay. And it's, it's funny, that's a, that's a great question because it, it really comes in from the debt part. And the biggest problem is that most Americans are living in a debt cycle and not a cash cycle. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? They're, they're in debt, highly leveraged debt. A lot of it is credit card and student loans. Um, the, um, they're, they're paying off one debt to then restart another one, or they're borrowing from one to pay another. Mm -hmm. So their, their lifestyle is, is being borrowed. You mm -hmm. know? So they're, the way I like to think of it is they're borrowing from their future self to finance today at the expense of tomorrow. So, so that is absolutely hands down. And part of the reason why I got involved in, 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 you know, in advising people is because you know, through the years that I was at home um, you know, and reading, I could see you know, the, you know, the, the student loan crisis exploding, the credit card crisis exploding, really the debt. You know. And, and to look back, I even look at last year when, when, uh, when we were starting with the quarantine and the shutdowns, what you saw, and it was um, mind-boggling to me to a certain degree because I always knew most people live paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. We all know that. We hear about it. It's written at nauseam everywhere. But what we saw last year was that not only families were living paycheck to paychecks, Companies, small businesses were living paycheck to paychecks. Mm -hmm. Big corporations were living paycheck to paycheck because they were all getting bailed out. Universities were, bit, were, you know, were living paycheck to paycheck. And we know the government is constantly living paycheck. So our whole economy is based on debt. Mm -hmm. And until we have that shackled, we're shackled down, we can't be free. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the reason why I got involved because it, it, it really became a heart project for me to help people because I knew by being on the other side of it what, you know, just some planning could change, how it could change people's lives. So, um, so it's to get people from that debt cycle into a cash cycle, which is owning assets, paying cash for things. It doesn't mean you never use your credit card again, right? Because mm -hmm. I use my credit card all the time, but I pay it off every month. Mm -hmm. So it's really living where you're free. Right, so um, so that's really the biggest the biggest challenge that we face as a country, is getting out of that debt cycle into a cash cycle where we have assets, we can you know we can one day stop working mm -hmm. um, because we've reached a point where we don't need our you know our date you know our paychecks we've we've created assets for ourselves. And it's interesting because the, the way I was raised was you never buy anything except right. your cash. Right. Ever. I mean, a vehicle, that's, that's what you do. Right. 
Um, so when I became an adult and I got married, I had no credit. I had never, mm -hmm. you know, I was just taught that was bad. Right. Um, but then, like you were mentioning, you know, it's okay to use a credit card, just pay it off every single month. Right. So, you know, that's what we've incorporated, you know, even with, with the business, with myself, we try to put as much as we can on the credit card at, under the budget, you know, right. within the budget, um, to really just improve the, the health of our credit. Right. So that is what one thing, you know, a financial advisor can do is explain to you you know, maybe even told some things that weren't correct um, through your, you know, generations right. of how your family operated and right. it, that advice was passed down. And, and, and But really, you can talk to someone who's got their feet on the ground right now and knows currently what is the best thing to do. Right. Um, you know, so it may even be good to have, you know, teenagers who are about to go to college or college students talk to a financial advisor. Absolutely. So that they can understand yeah. how the world works. Yeah. Because it's, and it, and it is important no matter where you are in life, you know, it's like, um, it's, we all go through different life changes. We all do, you know, whether it's, you know, you're growing up and now all of a sudden you're independent. That's the really the big one. You go to college, you have to know, you know, it's, I look at, you know, it's, so I take everything um, based on my personal experience. Like I don't tell anybody what to do if I haven't done it or if I haven't experienced it. Uh, so I look at even at my son who's now 18 and I will tell you there's not a week that doesn't go by that a credit card offer doesn't come in, mm -hmm. right? So, but we've educated him and explained you know he understands he's had a credit card so he knows how to manage it but every phase in life we there's it there's new challenges mm -hmm. so it's you know when you're an adult and then you know so then you, you right away you go into you know the system is set up to get you to go into a debt cycle mm -hmm. because people are making money off of it so how do we prevent that as much as possible and if we're in it how do we fix it then you have you you know a, a married you get married that's another major life change having kids it's another major life change. If you get divorced, another major life change. Losing a job, losing a parent. There's so many life changes that we go through, so we need to, you know, it's always good and advisable to get, you know, experts that, uh, that can help you through any of those mm -hmm. life changes. Because a lot of times we don't think of, you know, what are the ramifications long term. You know, a lot of times, you know, one of the things that I, you know, when I talk to, you know, uh, women and men that are going through divorce, you know, is the mindset. And I know you do it too, because a lot of times you have a mindset of, uh, I just want this to be over with. But if you go in there with that kind of mindset, mm -hmm. you could lose millions. And I did say millions with an M over the next 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. Or the mindset of, I want to make sure that he or she pays for everything. You know, I'm going to make sure that he or she is broke. That can cost you millions 20, 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. So having the right legal advice, having the right financial advice um, at, at, at those, all those life changes, um, you know, is, is critical mm -hmm. because it, it, it could cost you millions. So, oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. But the, the three steps, because I wanted to talk, tie in the debt piece of, of, um, of financial success, and it's simple. You know, a lot of people think it's complicated. And it really, and that's one of the things, the beauty that I've been able to do is, is to bring, to show you how simple it really is. It's really a three-step approach. Now, is it easy? No. It's simple, but because we all have to do the work, and you know, it's the reason we are where we are, and as a country, is because we decided that we wanted to spend and enjoy life mm -hmm. and live in the moment, et cetera, et cetera. And you can still do that, and that's the beauty of it. But the three step is the first one. First is, is you know, you've heard me mention you're you're borrowing from your future self. Mm -hmm. So let's reverse that, right? Pay yourself first. That is critical right we all know the first person we need to pay is uncle sam that one we can't escape so our paycheck first thing that comes out the next person that needs to be paid is yourself right and that means putting money away before mortgage before bills before anything else for your future self and that goes into an emergency fund so we have to save for emergencies and that is job loss the water heater breaks the car needs fixing we got to get out of that debt cycle mm -hmm. um, and then the second type of account is a short-term account um, so we want to make sure we're saving for vacations you know so you see how we have all been brainwashed to, to not think ahead it's all like right. oh I'll just do it now instead of planning just a little bit uh, reacting instead of right instead of planning. Yeah, so just like we would say for a house, for a down payment on a house, we, you know, 
We can't go into it thinking, oh, I'm going to buy a house tomorrow. No, we're going to have to plan for it. So you kind of have to plan for everything. So that short term helps you with um, the vacations, the college planning, the buying a home, starting a business, you mm -hmm. know, even going into start, starting your own business. You want to go into it with some cash, not borrowing 100% because guess what? You're going to keep paying the bank. Yeah. And then it's not going to be, if you think about it, if, you've, if you borrow to start your business, the bank owns your business. Mm -hmm. It's not you. So the whole point of starting a business is for you to own it. So mm -hmm. let's not let the banks own it. And then the third account is the, is the long-term wealth building. You know, one day, you know, I know you love what you do. I love what I do. But I want to have options one day to say, you know what, I can slow it down. I can go on vacation for two weeks or a month or travel the world for six months or work two days a week. So if we plan for and save for the future and we got so much time to save for it, you know, we can, um, it's possible. It's possible for all of us. Right. right? And then the step, second step is the debt. We have to have, you know, take inventory of where our money is going, you know. And it doesn't mean, you know, budgeting and now you can't spend any money. It's really just telling your money where to go, mm -hmm. right? Because once you tell it where to go, then you have all the freedom in the world to, to, to spend it the way you want without borrowing from the future. So one of the things that I incorporate is a debt repayment plan because we all have debt. So let's get rid of that debt as quickly as possible. And that includes mortgage. I'm big on getting rid of the mortgage because if you're paying two, three thousand dollars a month on a mortgage, how would you like that to go into wealth building accounts? So right. let's get rid of that mortgage, even if it's low interest rate. Right. Um, and then the third step is to protect uh, your assets while you're building. Mm -hmm. So making sure you have, uh, and this is a biggie, whether you are single, married, divorced, widowed, you want to make sure you're protecting um, your income, and mm -hmm. especially if there are kids involved. Um, so as you're building wealth, you want to make sure you protect the income and you protect your assets, because the worst thing, if, if somebody passes away, you lose that income. And that is super critical. That's probably one of my biggest tips as you're going through divorce is to make sure that, you know, both parties are properly insured. Um, especially if you have, you know, children and you have child support, right. alimony, because, you know, if, the, if that parent passes away, mm -hmm. you, the, the money goes away. So make sure that um, both parties are properly insured with their life. And there are some judges that um, they will order the child support paying party to get life insurance and yeah. the amount of the child support, yeah. um, which I think is really brilliant. I love that. I love it. I wish we would. You know, it's a, I, I find it funny that we, we, it's illegal to not have auto insurance, but not life insurance, which is our, our lives are our biggest asset, mm -hmm. if you think about it. Mm -hmm. So when you lose an income, the whole family you know, collapses, you yeah. know, whether they're together or not. Um, so I wish, I, my wish would be to have life insurance, you know, really mandatory for, if you have kids, you have to have life insurance because, you know, they, they're, they're dependent on you. Oh yeah. And it's not that expensive either, no. right? You know, so it's, it's an option. Right. I, and actually, you know, the one that I recommend, I only recommend term life insurance because it is very inexpensive. And it, it, it gives you a large, you know, a large death, uh, death benefit. So, and it's only for a certain period of time because at the end of the day, you know, if, as we go through life changes, we, you know, our children grow up, right? They're going to be on their own. You know, if you have a 25, 30 year old, do you need life insurance? No. If you, if you have all your debts paid off, do you need life insurance? No. So why get like expensive life insurance for mm -hmm. the rest of your life when you really don't need it? When you need it only for a certain period of time, it's inexpensive. Everybody can afford it. I mean, it's really a Chick-fil-A mm -hmm. meal. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then you have, you know, everybody protected for the time that you need. And then all that money, so my, my two tiers approach is the money you're saving on the life insurance, you invest it and you're building your assets so that way you become self-insured. So the three steps are to invest in yourself, right. pay yourself first, um, get the debt down, mm -hmm. and then protect your money. Right. Protect your money. Protect your income, absolutely. Okay. Do you want me to ask how does this apply to people who are considering? Yeah. We can already went yeah, through it, so if you wanna, we can one. skip to that last one if you want. Okay. 
Can you provide us with some tips for someone who's going through a divorce to avoid just some common pitfalls that you see in your own day-to-day -day work with people? Right. Yeah. Um, so first of all, you know, I think if you if you if you're watching this, you uh, I definitely recommend you consult with a uh, financial expert, a financial advisor, before and after divorce. Mm -hmm. um, and and the reason is is because they can help you with your financial. Um, um, your financial plan uh, for after the divorce. So one of the things that I that I that I think you want to think through, and you know, I would recommend even at, at the end of after you watch this video, write down some ideas of you know what are, where do you want to be financially a year from now, mm -hmm. or what is your your biggest financial fear uh, right now, and then get somebody involved that can help you with, with, with those. But having a, a financial advisor involved be, before and after, uh, can really, you know, change and readapt your financial strategy. You might not even have one, so it's a good time to start one because you're going to have to be very focused, um, on, on uh, you're gonna have to have a really focused plan because now everything you know everything changes. Mm -hmm. Number one is a new a new plan because now you're at one income, uh, you have different assets than you did before, so you want to make sure that you're you're taking into account all these changes and how they affect you you know for your future and particularly for retirement. Uh, number two, you want to make sure that you know they help you evaluate what are your Social Security benefits, because mm -hmm. that varies. You know, you, I'm sure you go through it with them. You know, depending on how long you've been married, what what are the assets, the incomes, but they'll be able to guide you and 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 give you advice on what you qualify for, and if you make any changes later on, how it affects your Social Security mm -hmm. benefits. Um, Number three, we talked about credit scores, and that's where uh, it's super, super duper important. A lot of people um, forget or don't even think about the common debts that they have. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that if you have any joint accounts, that those are taken care of. If you have any authorized users, that all of those changes are made, and a financial person can help you through that because... Um, I've seen it, and I'm sure you've seen mm -hmm. it too, where, you, you know, one spouse, their credit score gets destroyed mm -hmm. after a divorce. So you want to make sure that, um, that, that you can prevent as much as you can mm -hmm. there um, because that, it, it impacts. Your credit score, unfortunately, impacts the cost of borrowing in the future if you have to. And if you make changes, you might have to buy a house, you might have to get a car, and that's where your credit score comes in. Mm -hmm. And the final tip is uh, looking at your retirement accounts. Right, so some retirement accounts are tax deferred, which means you pay taxes when you take the money out in retirement, and some of them you already paid taxes on today, as well as an investment accounts, which you're paying taxes every year. So you want to make sure that if you, when you have a financial advisor uh, guiding you, is that you're not getting stuck with all the accounts that you're paying taxes on today, because then every year you're going to be, you know, hit with taxes versus, you know, splitting the accounts in mm -hmm. tax deferred, taxable. Uh, so that's where, you know, having somebody that understand the tax implications of your investments is good to have um, on your team. Absolutely. So. And, and that's not something that um, divorce and custody attorneys can advise on. We can't give tax advice. Right. Um, that is why it is crucial to speak with a financial advisor as well. Right. And also, I mean, if, you know, say you're in the case where you don't have any retirement accounts, you know, so there's somebody there that based on your new, your new, uh, your new life, your single income, your current assets, your current liabilities, they can put together a plan that will help you achieve your new goals, mm -hmm. your new financial goals uh, based on where you are. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Samantha, for being on here today. I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge with our viewers. How can our viewers get in contact with you? Well, first of all, thank you again for having me. It's been been a pleasure. Like I said, I just love it when, um, when, when I see other people that are in other businesses that really care about their clients mm -hmm. and they want to go above and beyond. Uh, and not only, you know, the legal piece, but also provide... Um, other uh, advice that is so critical in your success in life, um, especially as you go through such a big transition, which is 
um, stressful, no matter what. You know, even if if it's smooth sailing divorce, uh, it's still a stressful situation on you know every party involved. So, mm -hmm. uh, kudos for you for doing that. So thank well, you. Thank you for helping. Yeah, no problem. Um, so the best way to reach me, you could reach me on uh, my cell phone, which is 678-451-4735. My email is samdutto at gmail.com. So that's S-A-M-D-U-T-T-O at gmail.com. And then, of course, um, on social media. And in particular, you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. I particularly like Facebook um, just because I can, you know, I, I, I provide a lot of value there. I take really the educational approach where I teach, you know, the three steps and make sure you get a, you get a good understanding of, you know, how finances work, how investments work, not to the point where you're going to become an expert because obviously most people don't, but give you some, some comfort in where you are and map out your, your future so that you feel confident in the decisions you're making because that's super critical. Just like you want to you know, mm -hmm. get the right lawyer that you trust to walk you through this process. Mm -hmm. You want to have somebody you, you, you trust um, that will explain it to you uh, so that you, you really feel the confidence there. So find me on Facebook as well. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, and let's do this again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.